<laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Welcome to H2O. This is this week's segment of H2O, and this is hope to others. It's not water, but it's the, it's the power of the Holy Ghost, the water of the Holy Ghost. So H2O is actually meaning help to our families, help to our ministries, help to our marriages, help to our kids, to our lives. But it also means hope to others. So on this segment of Hope to Others, we want to bring out something. We want to talk about a particular subject that is very important, and it's prayer. I want to teach in line of a subject in regard to this category of prayer, defining the kingdom purpose of prayer. Now, you know, Jesus was sent on a kingdom of Simon, and that is to restore the kingdom of God in the earth, but to also restore you as citizens to this kingdom. Now, with that being said, prayer has to have a kingdom purpose. So we want to define the kingdom purpose purpose for prayer questions about prayer i mean because when i was thinking about prayer i was asking all kind of questions um and i was asking questions like what is prayer is prayer necessary is prayer is prayer does prayer have an effect in my life um if it's god's will why do i have to pray you may be asking these same questions if it's god's will why do you have to pray not only that does god need me to pray or does god just want me to pray that's an important question uh, let's go through another one. Can God's will be done on earth or in my life even if I don't pray? Can God, I mean, God is sovereign. Does that mean that God can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, even if I don't pray? Uh, we're going to find out how prayer, how, how your responsibility in prayer has to do with the will of God taking place in your life. So pay attention as we go. Now, knowing why we should pray is just as important as the act of praying itself. You got to know the purpose of it. If you don't know the purpose of it, then you'll get religious in it. You'll just start doing it over and over and over and over and not really having a real effect in your prayer life. I want to bring you to the place where I shift you from just doing it because you know you're supposed to do it, but getting the most out of prayer by knowing why you should do it. Prayer affects the spirit, the soul, and the body. Prayer is the only thing that can transcend, excuse me, prayer is the only thing that can transcend realms. It can save souls, families, and marriages. It's the catalyst of revivals and giving heaven unrestricted access to burst into manifestation in the earth. Now, prayer has a particular thing that is attached, that it is attached to. Prayer is attached to dominion. Come on, say that with me. Prayer is attached to dominion. It's important that you understand that prayer is attached to dominion. Prayer is attached to dominion for purpose. The purpose of prayer is to be our motivation for praying. That's it right there. The purpose for prayer is to be our motivation for praying. Whatever God designed prayer to be, that should be the thing that makes us want to pray. I don't want to pray just because of a situation or just because of a circumstance. I need to know the, mo the purpose of it. Because whatever this purpose is, it's supposed to be my motivation for praying. Now, listen to it. It is more than a well thought out religious activity. I know that we see prayer when we come to church and people are praying. And prayer is the most neglected part of church. I mean, the, mo the most neglected part of living a life in this kingdom or walking in the spirit. Prayer is the most neglected. I mean, we show up for revivals. We show up for musicals. We show up for conferences. We show up for seminars. We show up for birthday celebrations at church. We show up for pastor appreciations. But the prayer meeting is always the smallest meeting in the church. It is always the smallest meaning in the church. So it's more than a religious activity. It has purpose. Everything the father created has purpose. He is a God of purpose. He doesn't create anything if it doesn't have purpose. So he establishes the purpose of prayer first, and then he brings prayer into existence. So let me show you. The purpose of prayer is never selfish or religious. There is a kingdom purpose for prayer. Before we can find out what is the kingdom purpose for prayer, we must, we must first be reminded of the goal, the intent, the desire of the presence of his kingdom in the earth. God's kingdom is desiring to colonize. That's an important word. That word colonize is this. When you start looking at, let's break down the word colony. It's an extension of the kingdom. It is an extension of the government of God. God is looking for earth to be an extension of heaven, not a separate location, but an extension of heaven. That's why Jesus prayed it this way. Our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth 
as it is in heaven. So whatever is going on in heaven should be going on in earth. That's where we get the word colony from. So it's an extension. So God's kingdom is looking to invade the hearts of man so that whatever was going on in heaven can now go on in your life. He's looking to colonize the earth by his presence invading your life. Glory to God as you submit to him. So now that we understand that, let's look at important, an important point. It is God's will to work with man, not independent of him. God is not trying to work without you. God is trying to work with you. Come on, you ought to say that to somebody. God is trying to work with you, not without you. He's trying to bring you in. I was teaching earlier this week about the decrease of John the Baptist. And John the Baptist said that I must decrease that he may increase. Now, John the Baptist, when he said he must decrease, he was saying that I must get out of the way that he may come into flow. Now, that's a different decrease. We don't decrease the same way that John the Baptist decreased. John the Baptist represented the Old Covenant. He represented the Old Testament. He represented the Old Order. He was the last of the Old Testament prophets, actually. Even though his ministry took place in the Gospels, he was still the last of the Old Testament prophets. So John the Baptist was representing the law. He was representing the, the law and the prophets of saying that I must get out of the way that Jesus may come. Now, when we say I must decrease, we're not decreasing in the same way John the Baptist is decreasing. He decreased by getting out of the way. We decrease by getting into the flow. In other words, I decrease by bringing myself under submission that God may use me according to his will, that we may flow with what Jesus is doing. Not getting out of the way of what he's doing, but get in the flow of what he's doing. That's very important. So God is looking to work with man, not independent of man. Say that with me. Touch yourself and say, God is looking to work with me. If God is going to do it, he want to do it with you, through you, in you, to you, for you. God wants to work with you. Watch what it says in Mark chapter 16. And I believe we're going to look at verse 19 and 20. So then after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And he then went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs and wonders. Look what God was doing. He was working with them, not apart from them. He was working with them, confirming the word with signs and wonders following. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, this is what it says. For we are laborers together with God. We are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. We are laborers together. Look what God is always saying. I want to work with you. I want to reach your family through you. I want to save your city through you. I want to change lives with you. I want to work with you. That's important. So say it again. It is God's will to work with man, not independent of him. The next part is this. Man is the established authority over all the earth. There is no other authority established over the earth but man. God established that. That's in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. It says, and God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. God is saying this here. God said, I establish you as the authority over the earth. Glory to God. Now, establishing you as the authority of the earth means this. There is no other le authority that's legal in the earth. You are the legal authority in the earth. Glory to God. That's a very good point. So when the enemy tries to walk in authority, it's illegal. When your flesh or your soul or your emotions try to walk in authority, it's illegal. God gave authority to you, the spirit man. You are the legal authority in the earth. So in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, it says this. It said, God said, let us make man in our image. The word image means to resemble in appearance. In other words, it's to look like God. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, God made a man in such a way. He made you in such a way that if God was to look in the mirror, <laughs> if he was to look in the mirror, he will see his he will see you as his reflection. You will be the reflection of God. Image means to resemble in appearance. Now the word likeness means to reflect through action. So image means to look like him. Likeness means to act like him. That's what it means to reflect through action. 
Now, when he said he gave you dominion, this is what it means. To exercise authority and power. To prevail against rule. To prevail or rule. To bring order or to reign. God created you to bring order. My God. That's good right there. The reason why that's so good, because we've been crying about things being out of order when God said, that's the reason I made you. I made you to put things in place. I made you by my spirit in my name to put things in place. That's what you were. You were created to bring order. So when Adam would meet God in the garden, it would be like God is looking in the mirror. This is the first representation of prayer in scripture. Religion has given us a view of prayer of a no good, unrighteous, filthy servant coming to a holy, just righteous king. Yeah, you'll go to God and you'll just feel so worthless and you'll feel so bad and you'll feel so unholy and you'll feel so. So religion gave us that view of prayer. But that's not the first view that we have of prayer. The first view we have of prayer is when God and Adam would meet in the garden and Adam was in his image, in his likeness. That's what prayer should look like. Prayer should look like someone that is created in the image and likeness of God coming to God to discuss with God, to communicate with God. Glory to God. When this scripture gives us the type of God, the man that God in intended to communicate with, we got to realize that God worked through Jesus to make us like him again so that we can be here in his image and likeness so that we can approach him in prayer with power and authority. Now, over there in the book of Psalm chapter eight, starting at verse three, this is what David said. When I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained. What is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you visit him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. Thou hast made him to have dominion over the work of thy hands, and you have put all things under his feet. You have put all things under his feet. Do you see that? You made him to have dominion and you put all things under his feet. In verse five, it says you were crowned with glory. The word glory comes from the Hebrew word kabod. It means heavy, weighty. Uh, this is what it refers to. It refers to responsibility. It's kind of like Michael Jordan carrying the weight of the team. Or uh, right now, uh, uh, Drew Brees carrying the weight of the team. Or Dak Prescott carrying the weight of the team. It has to do with the pastor carrying the weight of the ministry. It's responsibility. It's the father carrying the weight of the family. It is glory. It's responsibility. It's authority. The responsibility of ruin, ruling. The weight that is on a star player is the weight that is on man in the earth. God has made you responsible. He's given you authority. You have glory. You are responsible. Now, in verse six, it said that you were made to have dominion over all the works of his hand. That word dominion means to govern, to manage or to represent, to govern, to manage or represent. God's intention is not to set and the God's intention is not set on the conditions of the earth. I know that we're crying about how bad the earth is and how big the problems is and how bad the situation is and how your body feels and how God is not looking at the condition of the earth. He's not looking at the condition of the he's looking at the condition of man. And he's working to change your thinking, to change your condition, because he says this, if I can change your condition and your position, if I can change your position, then you would change your own conditions. Glory to God. That's a good point right there with authority. God is saying, if I can change the way you think, if I can show you that you have dominion and authority and you're not waiting on me to change how you feel and you're not waiting on me to change what's going on and you're not waiting on me. I know that we, we went, the world went into a frenzy when Donald Trump became president. But listen, Donald Trump becoming president does not affect you as a kingdom representative in the earth. No, actually, it shows your responsibility. You cannot place the responsibility of the earth on one individual. No, you are responsible. You are responsible for representing God. You've been given glory and authority to represent him. Now watch this. In Psalm 115, verse 15, it says this. The heavens, even the highest heavens, belong unto the Lord. But the earth he has given unto the children of men. Excuse me, that's verse 16. It says that the earth he has given to the children of men. Look what he says. The heaven, even the highest heavens, belong unto the Lord, but he gave the earth. That word given means to assign to another. 
God gave you the earth. The earth is not your, res your residence, it's your assignment. You've been living like the earth is your residence. You know, I'm from Shreveport, Louisiana, so some of the things that I say um, sound like I'm from Shreveport. In South Baton Rouge, they say this. They say, um, they, they speak with a certain dialect. They, they will say, um, they would make a statement, then they would respond to their statement. They would say, it's hot out here? Yeah. Uh, don't play with me? No. That's a South Louisiana statement. Well, in Shreveport, we don't talk like that. So in Shreveport, we say stuff like, ain't it, man? I know it sounds country, but it says, ain't it, man? In other words, you would say, man, it's hot out here. And they would say, ain't it, man? That, that is to say, yes, it is hot. Now, that dialect is where I'm from. Now, you've been, I, I'm not, although I live in South Baton Rouge, I still speak like I'm from Shreveport in a lot of ways. God is saying, I place you on the earth for the earth to be your assignment, not your residence. You shouldn't talk like you're from this earth. You shouldn't think like you're from this earth. You shouldn't function like or act like you're from this earth when you're from a kingdom that is above the conditions of this earth. Amen. So he gave you the earth as your assignment, not your, your, your residence. Religion teaches us to ask God to come to the earth and fix things. So we pray, God, come do it. God, come do it. God, come do it. When God says, no, why would I come do it when it's your assignment? I assigned you to do it. He doesn't want to have to come down to the earth to fix things. He wants us to be responsible with our assignment. Let's say, for instance, you have a young child. Let's say your son is 11 years old and you tell your son, you say, hey, I want you to go in there and fix, clean your room. I want you to uh, clean your room. And then your son come back 10 minutes later and say, mom, I want you to do me a favor. Dad, I want you to do me a favor. And you say, what is it, son? And they say, I want you to come clean the room. You will look at him. You say, I'm not going to come clean the room. I told you to clean the room. That's the same way God is looking at you now. When you beg God to come and fix things in the earth, God is saying, I gave the earth to you for your assignment. I gave you my spirit. I gave you my authority. I gave you my name. I gave you my glory. I gave you my nature. I gave you five things that would actually change everywhere you go. And by my spirit, in my name, by my authority, I get involved through you doing. God is trying to get you involved. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, we see that God placed Adam in the garden to rule it, to manage it, to be responsible, to protect it. God placed you in the earth to manage the earth, to manage the earth. Watch this scripture over here in Luke chapter 4. I love this scripture. Are you being responsible for what God placed you in the earth to manage? Hey, Toy, are you being responsible for what God placed you in the earth to manage? Are you being responsible for that? Are you doing exactly what God told you to do? No, we're talking about the kingdom purpose of prayer. We're going to get to it in just a second. But now I got to talk uh, right now. I got to talk about prayer and dominion, how these two things work together. Watch what it says in chapter four, verse six. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give you and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me. And whosoever, I will give it unto you. Now watch what he said. He said, I gave you the power. If you will worship me, it'll be yours. I will give you the power, all this power. Look what he said. It was given unto me. It was delivered to me. How did Satan get this power, this authority, this jurisdiction, this rule over this territory? Satan was only able to offer Adam, offer uh, Jesus what Adam gave him. See, in the garden when Adam sinned, Adam gave Satan jurisdiction. He gave him authority over the earth. So now Satan show up to Jesus and he says, I'll give this to you if you worship me. Glory to God. So now we see that Satan had jurisdiction over the earth, but he got it from Adam. But Jesus didn't come to get it through the easy way. He came to get it through the hard way. So he was telling Satan, I'm going to take back the authority over the earth and I'm not going to do it through you giving me anything. I'm going to take it. Glory to to God. So now that we talked about the authority, we talked about man is the established authority in the earth. We talked about man having dominion in the earth. He's created in the image and the likeness of God. Now that we talked about all of this dominion, we talked about all of this authority. We talked about the earth being your, your jurisdiction and assignment from God to change the earth to reflect heaven. What does all this have to do with prayer? How does this relate to prayer? Prayer and dominion are so closely connected that I want to show you something. The reason we started talking about authority and dominion first. 
Only dominion has the right to pray. Only authority has the right to pray. No other creature prays to God. Angels don't pray. Glory to God. No, they worship before him. They bow before him, but they don't pray. They don't pray. Only those who God, only they who God is them, who God has given authority has the right to pray. God didn't give authority to demons. God didn't give authority to angels. God didn't give authority to animals. God didn't give authority to these things. So these things do not have the right to pray. But I have the right to pray. Because he has given me dominion. Because he has given me an assignment. Because he has given me authority. I have the right to pray. Here's my right to pray. Here's why I have a right to pray. Write this down somewhere on your paper or anywhere you want to go. I'll write, write this down. Prayer only exists because another realm exists. That's the only reason prayer exists. I'm going to say that again. Prayer only exists because another realm exists. You are on earth and because there is a spirit realm, that's why prayer exists. God is in heaven and because there is an earth realm, that's why prayer exists. No other creature has the right to pray. Only the ones that God gave authority to. Only man. Only the one that God gave dominion to. The only the one that God gave the responsibility and the assignment of the earth to. That's the only one that has the right to pray. So I'm going to get ready to close out with this point. Then it's only fair to conclude that prayer is a meeting of divine authorities. Glory to God. It is the authority in the earth meeting with the authority over heaven and earth. It is the authority of all there is meeting with the authority of the earth realm. It is two authorities coming together. It is when the head of the earth submits to the head of the heavens and the two come together to meet for the purpose of impacting the earth. That's why he said that in Genesis 1 and 26 that man was given dominion. Because man was given dominion over all the earth. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit have agreed not to get involved in your dominion. I want to show you this. In Genesis 1 and 26, watch what it says. It said, and God said, let us make man in our image. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion. Do you see that? Watch what God says. He says, let us. He forms a meeting. He brings together the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit meet together. This is a divine meeting in heaven. And as they meet together, they said, before we get started on making this man, let us. Everybody has to agree. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. They all had to agree. Let us make a man that, would have, that we would have to let them have dominion. Listen what he agreed to. Before he made man, he agreed. He said, let us, let them. Before we get started on making man, we first have to agree that we are not going to get involved in what they got going on unless they invite us. Before we make him, let's agree. Let us, let them have dominion. Glory to God. That's good news right there. God is saying, I gave you dominion. I will not invade the affairs of your life. I will not just kick in the door of your life. I will not. Yes, it hurts my heart to see what's going on. It hurts my heart to see you in the condition that you're in. It hurts my heart to see things happening in your life. But I will not get involved if you don't invite me. Because before I made you in Genesis chapter 1 verse 6, I agreed to let you have dominion. Now watch this. That's when prayer comes in. Prayer is an invitation to our king for heaven to interfere in the affairs on earth. It is you saying, God, I give you permission to get involved. I invite you to get involved. I know what you're thinking. God doesn't need permission. But it was God's design and God's plan to place a, an authority in the earth. God placed you in dominion in the earth. So now God is saying, I have to let you have dominion. But when you pray, you're saying, Father, I submit my dominion to you so that you can begin to get involved and interfere with the affairs of the earth. If you don't pray, then heaven doesn't have permission to get involved. I want to tell you, 
I know your body feels a certain way, your mind feels a certain way, your marriage looks a certain way, the earth looks a certain way, your church going a certain way, things are happening in your life a certain way. Then you need to pray so that heaven can get involved. Ooh, if that don't motivate you to pray. If that don't motivate you to get on your face before God, if that don't motivate you to grab the word of God and begin to pray the word to God, if that don't motivate you to begin to pray the word, my God, this is good. If that don't motivate you, I don't know what will. God is saying this. I am praying that you will get involved, that, that I will get involved. God is saying, I want you to pray, excuse me, that I can get involved. I work with you. This is how I work with you. You invite me. And I began to get involved. That's what you do in prayer. I'm going to close out with this one scripture in Matthew 16 and 19. Look what Jesus says. And verily I say unto you that I give unto you the keys of the kingdom. And whatsoever you bind on earth, it will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Watch what he says. Heaven will only do what they see you do in the earth as far as impacting the earth. If you bind it on earth, then heaven got your back. If you loose it on earth, then heaven got your back. In other words, I need you to get to work. That's what God is saying. I need you to bind it. I need you to loose it. And whatever decision you make, heaven will not violate your decision. But heaven will have your back in it. I want to tell you right now, this is the kingdom purpose of prayer. God is looking to impact the earth, to cause earth to be a reflection of heaven. But he's saying this, I need you to pray. I need you to get involved. So right now, before we close, let's pray. Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that dominion reigns in your heart, but also in our spirit. You have given man dominion over the earth. He is responsible. He has, the, he has been crowned with glory and honor. So now I pray for the believers, Lord God, that know this, that has received it through rebirth. I pray right now that they would open their eyes in their spirits and that they would begin to pray to give you access. That they wouldn't lock you out. The enemy is working to make them too preoccupied to pray so that heaven cannot get involved. I want to tell them today that they shouldn't be too busy to pray, but they should pray so heaven can interfere. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, this is this segment, this week's version of H2O, Hope to Others. If you hadn't had a chance to go to the website for the Hope Bible Institute, go there. It is www.hopebible.net. www.hopebible.net. We look forward to hearing from you. God bless you. Amen.